Hello and welcome. Welcome to my YouTube channel Pharmaven. In today's video, I will be discussing about media fill of lifelice products. So, how we can simulate media fill for the lifelice products, we will understand in this video. So, what will be the outline of presentation? We will be discussing guidance on lifelization product media fill. We will be discussing practical aspect of lifelization products media fill. And we will be discussing certain frequently asked questions. So let us begin with the video. Please be with my video till end. So what are the frequently asked questions into the lyophilization media field? Let us understand. First is full lyophilization cycle simulation or not. So whether I have to simulate full lyophilization cycle, freezing to be simulated. So whether I have to simulate freezing, deep vacuum to be simulated. So whether I have to simulate the vacuum level as deep as which is there into the product. All shelves to be loaded. So whether I have to load all the shelves of the freeze dryer. If I have same filling line for liquid and lyre products, should only one lyophilization media is okay or not? Bracketing in lyophilization media. So how we can I can apply bracketing approach into the live media? Tracking of lyophilization media fill containers with intervention. How I can track? So let's start with the guidance first. Guidance for industry September 2004. This is the very very important guidance, very detailed guidance by FDA. What this guidance tells, let us understand. It tells that a media fill program should incorporate the contamination risk factors that occur on a production line and accurately assesses the state of process control. So what we have to do? Contamination risk factors should be incorporated in production line and accurately assess the state of process control. What are the my status of process control through media fill? Media field study should closely simulate aseptic manufacturing operations, incorporating as appropriate worst case activities and conditions that provide a challenge to aseptic operations. So, media field study should closely simulate the aseptic manufacturing operation, which will incorporate worst case activities and the conditions that provide challenge to the aseptic operations. So, interventions, live live and media itself is a challenge. Now about the live realization, FDA recommends that the media fill program address applicable issues which includes live realization when applicable. So when we have live realization as a process, we have to include as a aseptic process simulation program. Now guidance for industry September 2000 further suggests that the duration of the aseptic processing operation is a major consideration in media fill design. Although the most accurate simulation model would be the full batch size and duration because it most closely simulates the actual production operation, other appropriate models can also be justified. So this is what does, does it tell? We have to simulate full batch size because it's most closely simulate the aseptic actual production operation, but other appropriate models can also be used to justify. That will be a uh, certain number of containers for certain duration. We'll discuss into the detail of the in next slides. The duration of the media field run should be determined by the time it takes to incorporate manipulation and intervention as well as appropriate consideration of the duration of the actual aseptic processing operation. So how what will be my media field duration? It should be by the time it takes to operate, incorporate manipulation and intervention, whatever my manipulation, whatever intervention I have to do as well as the appropriate consideration of the duration of actual aseptic processing operation. So if my filling operation is going to take 24 hours in my routine commercial, then I have to simulate the media field also for the at least 24 hours. So that is the requirement. For lyophilization operations, FDA recommends that the unsealed container be exposed to partial evacuation of the chamber in a manner that simulates the process Simulate the process. So for lifelines operation, FDA recommends that the unsealed containers be exposed to partial evacuation. So we are not talking of deep vacuum, ultimate vacuum which is there into the product. And in a, in a manner that simulates the process. Why should not be frozen? So we don't have to freeze the media. This is frequently asked whether we have to freeze the media because we are simulating the freezing or freeze drying media field. It's no, we, we don't have to freeze the media. And precaution should be taken that the medium remains in aerobic state. So why it is important? If we purge with the nitrogen, then the aerobic state will not be there. It will be anaerobic state and aerobic bacteria 
will not grow into that environment. So aerobic state has to be maintained to avoid potentially inhibiting the growth of microorganisms. So to support the growth of microorganisms, we have to maintain the <coughs> aerobic state by compressor and we don't have to use nitrogen. Now we know that EU NX1 has been made effective in August. So what EU NX1 has to say about the media fields in lyophilized product? It tells that lyophilization is a critical process step and all activities that can affect the sterility of the product or material need to be regarded as extension of the aseptic process of the sterilized product. So it is stating that lyophilization is a critical process step and all activities that can affect the sterility of the product or material need to be regarded as extension of the aseptic processing of the stylized product. So in my aseptic processing, I have to simulate lyophilization process as an activity. The lyophilization equipment and its process should be designated to ensure that the product or material sterility is maintained during the lyophilization by preventing microbial and particle contamination between the filling of products for lyophilization and completion of the lyophilization process. So what does it mean? The lyophilization equipment and its process should be designed to ensure that product and product material sterility material is maintained during lyophilization and how we have to maintain by preventing microbial and particle contamination between filling of the product or lyophilization and the completion of the lyophilization process. So after I have I have to have that controls that I, I will prevent microbial particle contamination when my product is filled till it goes to the lyophilizer and till the lyophilization process is simulated. I have to control the microbial and particle contamination during the lyophilization process media field simulation. All control measure in place should be determined by the site's contamination control strategy. So EU NX1 has this very, very specific requirement about contamination control strategy, which has to be followed to prevent particle and microbial contamination. EU NX1 further states that the live realization process simulation should mimic all aspects of process, except those may affect the viability or recovery of contaminants. So, such as, for instance, boiling over or actual freezing of the solution should be avoided. So I have to simulate the lyophilization process, but the process that may affect the viability of the recovery of contaminants, I have to avoid. What are those processes? Boiling over. When boiling over will occur, if I apply very, very deep vacuum to simulate lyophilization, then boiling over will occur. Media field will come, media will come out of the vials and actual freezing of the solution should be avoided. Why? So factors to consider in determining APS region includes where applicable. Why have to simulate to prevent the actual freezing? Because it, there will be questions that once it is frozen and came back to liquid, it may or may not support the growth. Now factors to consider are the use of hair to break vacuum instead of nitrogen or other process gas. So I have to use compressor. Why? I have to maintain the aerobic conditions to support the microbial growth. So I don't have to use nitrogen or other process gas during the media fields. Then replicating the maximum interval between sterilization of the lyophilizer and its use. This is practically we call it sterile hold time. So after sterilization of the my lyophilizer, what maximum time I will be using or I'll be keeping as a hold in my routine that I have to simulate in media field also. So if I have, for example, considering the weekends, after my sterilization cycle, I can start loading into the lyophilizer after 48 hours, then I have to simulate 48 hours during my media field as well. Replicating the maximum period of time between filtration and lyophilization. So once my filtration is complete, how long it will take to start lyophilization cycle, considering the uh, sterile filter bulk hold time, the lyophilization loading and unlo loading time and completion of the lyophilization. So all those whole time I have to simulate in my media field as a part of replicating the maximum period. So this is guidance is now say, stating is very, very clear about how we how what whole times we have to simulate. Then quantitative aspects of the worst case situation. So what are the quantitative aspects of the worst case situation? That is the loading largest number of trays replicating the longest duration of the loading where the chamber is open to environment. 
So there are two ways. Either we have to load the largest number of trays, or we can have a less number of batch size. Maybe, for example, 10,000. My live fillager will be of the capacity of 30,000, but I am simulating with the 10,000 ones. So my filling duration would be long enough. I have to extend the filling such that my actual aseptic filling process will be simulated. The representative number of the intervention manipulation will be simulated. I have to design my media fill that way. Guidance further tells that the APS should take into account various aseptic manipulations and interventions. Whatever aseptic manipulation we are doing, whatever intervention we are doing, that I have to take account into the aseptic process simulation or media field. Those which are known to occur during normal production as well as the worst case situation and take into account. So I have to consider all the routine normal product aseptic manipulation and intervention as well as the worst case situation during the media field. What are those? First is inherent which is part and parcel of the process and other are corrective intervention which are not part of routine but occurs very rarely or not that frequently. For example, changing of the certain parts, adjusting of the sensor, these are not very very routine. What are the inherent? Stopper adjustment, removal of fallen wire, wire adjustment, removal of blockage. These are which which can occur. Addition of the rubber stopper. These are the routine which can occur. Such certain are the corrective answers. The sensor adjustment which needs which may also need engineering help. These are corrective answer uh, intervention. All those should be performed in a manner and frequency similar to that during the routine uh, routine aseptic process. So these uh, two words are important. One is manner and other is frequency. So what do we, by, we mean by manner? Manner will be we have to simulate the process as exactly as the routine process. So it should not happen that in my media field I am, I am doing the activity very very cautiously. I am doing it very slowly. I am taking all the precautions and in my routine I am not that vigilant. It should not occur. The manner and the frequency should be similar to the routine aseptic processes. The inclusion and frequency of the intervention in the, into the aseptic process simulation should be based on the SS risk posed to the product stability. For example, rubber stopper addition is my routine intervention. With my larger batch size, I have to have performed maybe 30 times, 40 times. But in media pill, it is based on the considering the size of media pill, that number will not be there. So such routine intervention which are very common and which not having any sterility risk can be optimized. But the critical intervention we have to simulate exactly as per the actual product. So if my critical intervention for example removal like adjusting the sensor or removal of jam which requires lot of efforts then I have to simulate exact number as per my routine. Then. APS or aseptic process simulation should not be used to justify the process or practices that poses the contamination risk. For example, power failure simulation, air velocity low simulation, changing like minimizing the air changes in the HVAC, such such sort of things which are not my routine, which is we say it was case and we want to simulate in media field, it is not required. It, it is not acceptable. The aseptic process should not be used to justify the practices that poses unnecessary contamination risk to the product. It should not be simulated in media field. We cannot say I have simulated in media field so I will use that in product also. It's no. Now UNX1 again states that in developing the aseptic process simulation plant consideration should be given to the following. What we have to consider? Identification of the worst case condition covering the relevant variables. What are the variables such as container size and line speed and their impact on the process? These variables we have to consider. The outcome of the assessment should justify the variable selected. So what container size I have selected? What line speed I have selected? And what is the impact? That should be a risk assessment document or impact assessment document should be there. Basis that I have determined my approach. That should go into your validation master plan. That should, that should go in your SOP, how we are simulating these things. Then determining the representative size of container closure combination to be used for validation. So what container closure size I should be using? 
Bracketing or bad tracing approach may be considered for validation of the same container closure configuration for different products where the process equivalency is scientifically justified. So I can use bracketing and matrixing approach where I can justify the same container size for different products. For example, I have container sizes 10 ml, 15 ml, 20 ml, 30 ml and 100 ml. So by uh, doing the media fill for 10 ml and 100 ml, I am providing a bracketing approach to all in between whilst and now we can say uh, simulated into the media fill and that can be used for the products. Maximum permitted hold time for the sterile product and equipment expert during the aseptic process. So what is my maximum hold time of the sterile product and what is my equipment exposed during the aseptic process that I have to simulate into the media field. In my next, next video, I'll be discussing about PDA technical report 22. So please be with me, be my video, be with my channel. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching my video. Hope this will be helpful till now. I'll make more videos to cover this topic fully. Thank you. Thank you very much.